Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Uh, today I want to look at uh, calculating the magnetic moment and we're going to look at three different objects. I'm going to place a charge Q on them and that charge is going to be uniformly distributed on the three objects. Uh, we're going to look at a disc, I'm going to look at a spherical shell and also a solid sphere. We're going to spin that object at some angular frequency omega and I'll show you how to calculate the magnetic moment in all of these three cases. Uh, this was a request from a student. I always like requests from students. Sorry it took so long to make the video. All right, so here we go. Remember, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you like what I do on my channel, consider subscribing. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. I'll always get back to you. All right, before looking at those specific cases, let's just remind ourselves of what the definition of the magnetic moment is. Uh, sometimes it's written as mu, sometimes it's written as lowercase m. I'll just use lowercase m. And here's the definition, kind of in one dimension. One dimension, you simply have a current like the one I've kind of drawn here. Could be some arbitrary current loop. And we have to define some vector that has a length of DL that kind of just follows that uh, wire or this current over here. So the definition is a cross product between the vector R and that can be defined uh, anywhere kind of, and it's a cross product of R with kind of the current here. Uh, in three dimensions, it looks a little bit differently. Uh, have the current density and that's integrated over all of space. And what we're gonna do today, although we're dealing with three dimensional objects, we can actually use the 1D version and it works just fine. Okay, so first thing we have to worry about is what is the magnitude and what is the direction? Well, to find the magnitude, uh, all you have to do is take any vector dl along this loop. Let's take this small one over here. Uh, the vector r goes like this. Uh, the vector dl, if I start it at the same position, this is the vector dl. Uh, what you're going to find now is if you use the cross product, um, so that's r cross dl, you should find a vector that's coming out of the page, right? You take your right hand, you place your fingers along the first vector R and you curl them toward the second vector DL and you should find a vector, which call it Z hat, that's coming out of the page. And it doesn't matter where you choose the vector DL. I could have picked this one over here and I'm still gonna get the same answer. I'm always gonna get a vector coming out of the page. Um, the other thing you could do is you could take your right hand and just place your fingers along the current and your thumb will give you the direction, right? Your thumb should be pointing out of the page if I place my fingers along the current here. All right, so we've already done quite a lot of work. We've already determined the direction of the magnetic moment. So all we have to do now is determine the magnitude. So let's have a look at this equation in a little bit more detail here. So let me kind of bring it over on this side. And... Let's, since the current is going to be constant, what I could do is I could factor that out. All right, that doesn't affect anything. And then, actually, let's look at the second term. And this is kind of what I'm more interested in here. And it's R cross DL. And it's really integrated over this entire loop. All right. Um, if you remember just the simple definition of a cross product, right? If I have a cross product of a vector A with a vector B, um, again, if this is my vector A, uh, imagine this here is my vector B. The definition of the cross product is it represents the area of this parallelogram, right? That is really what the cross product is. And the direction of that vector is simply, again, it's pointing out of the page, but the magnitude of this cross product represents the area. So actually, if you take one half in the front of that, that simply represents half the area. All right, because look at what we have over here in our magnetic moment definition. We have a one half, and then we have this R cross DL. Well, the R cross DL simply represents the area of this small little wedge here when I include the one half. And what I'm doing now is I'm integrating all of those R cross DLs. And again, putting the one half in the front. So that means this definition of magnetic moment simply boils down to I multiplied by the area of the loop. I'll just call that A. And the direction we know, the direction is out of the page. So what we're going to do and what follows here, we're basically going to apply this formula, our 1D formula, which boils down to this equation. Okay. And we're going to show you how to apply this equation to those three spinning objects. All right, so let's remember our definition for magnetic moment. It's simply the current uh, multiplied by the area. Now, how do you do that when you have a uniform charge distribution over here? What we're going to do is we're going to break up this disk into a whole bunch of rings. So I've got one here drawn out here. 
um, outlined by these two green uh, circles. Now, this is going to have a certain distance r uh, away from the center of this particular ring that I'm going to look at. And that ring has a current, right? If I have a whole bunch of spinning charge, I can denote a current for that. And then I could basically add up the contributions from all the rings to get the total magnetic moment. So they all, each ring rotates with some angular velocity omega. And each ring, again, if I'm taking this to be the direction of rotation, each ring should contribute a magnetic moment that's pointing in the same direction. Okay, so rather than using kind of this definition here, that's for the total, what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate what is the magnetic moment of just the simple ring. And that's simply going to be a small contribution. And then once I add up all of these contributions from each ring, then I'm going to get the total magnetic moment. So this specific, uh, this specific ring here is going to generate a little bit of current. And this specific ring here has a particular area. All right, so I'm applying the same definition. And again, we already know the direction, so I don't really have to worry about that. So we'll come back to the definition of the current in just a minute. But the area of that ring is simply pi r squared. All right, we've already done a lot of work. So how do you define the current of this ring? Well, what I'm going to first do is I'm going to define the total charge density of uh, this disk. Again, that charge Q is uniformly distributed. So the charge density is simply the total charge of the disk divided by the total area of the disk. And I've denoted the radius of the disk as A. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, if you want to know how much charge is actually on this disk, <laughs> So we're going to call that amount of charge, I'm going to call that dq. Uh, dq is simply going to be how much charge is on the disk. So it's the charge density multiplied by the area of that disk. Uh, the area of the disk, again, if you're using cylindrical coordinates, again, it's the circumference, right? the length, which is 2 pi r. And the thickness is dr. So that's the total charge. So I'm working now to try to get what is the total current generated when we go around one complete turn. So the total amount of current then is going to be that charge divided by how long it takes for it to do one full turn. So let's go ahead and substitute uh, my expression over here for the charge, the element of charge of that disk, 2 pi r dr. Now what is the period? Well, if I'm giving you omega, uh, omega is related to the period, 2 pi divided by the period. Therefore, the period is simply 2 pi divided by omega. So you can go ahead now and substitute that into our expression for the current produced by this ring. So we have 2 pi divided by omega. Uh, the 2 pi's cancel out. Now I rearrange that. You can bring the omega to the top, and you're going to be left with sigma, uh, omega, and r dr. So that's the element of current produced by this ring. Now let's go back and substitute this expression right here and look at how we calculate just the magnetic moment produced by that specific ring. So we have sigma, omega. Uh, there's going to be a pi that is there from the area. And now I have r squared from the area of that ring, and I have an r here. So this should look like r cubed dr. And now the goal really is to calculate not the magnetic moment of this specific ring, but the total magnetic moment, which means you have to add up all the contributions. And that's going to give me my total magnetic moment. And this is adding them up from the smallest ring all the way to the biggest ring. All right, this is very easy to evaluate this integral. It's simply pi, sigma, omega. And I'm left with r4 r divided by 4. And that's evaluated between the limits of 0 and a. All right, so my final expression, uh, pi, sigma, omega, over 4. And this is a to the fourth power. Now, you can write this in a slightly different way. If I use my charge density, I can write the magnetic moment in terms of the total charge. So let's go ahead and do that. So i leave this the way it is. Uh, my charge density here was q divided by pi a squared. And I'm still left with all of those other terms, a to the 4. So the last thing you can do here is just simplify this expression. I can cancel two of those. And I'm left with 2 at the top. So the final expression you get is 1 fourth, the total charge of the disk, uh, the radius squared, 
and omega. Okay, uh, if I want to write it in vector form, again, I'm just going to call that the z hat direction. Uh, that's the direction, we'll call this the z hat direction. <laughs> Okay, so pretty straightforward. Again, it's gonna be the same thing now for the spherical shell and the solid sphere. We're going to follow the exact same procedure. We're gonna split this up into rings or little shells, and then we're gonna add them all up to get the total magnetic moment. Uh, hi guys, I'll do the spherical shell and the solid sphere, calculating the magnetic moment in two separate videos. Uh, just look down in the description below for the links to watch those videos. Again, ask any questions.